This video is about using the coping saw. Now, we're gonna go back to my piece of acrylic that you've probably seen before, and we can see what I've done is I've marked off the area using this uh, hatching uh, method to show the area that I don't want. This is my waste material that I'm gonna try and remove, okay? Now I'm gonna use two techniques. I'm gonna be trying to cut a curve, and I'm also gonna be trying to cut a straight line. Now, cutting a straight line is often very challenging, okay, to actually hold the saw, especially when you're using something like acrylic, which can snap easily. But we're gonna start by cutting this, this curve. We're getting quite close to that, okay? Now, in this case, I'm using the, the smaller metal vices, okay? This gives me the benefit of raising uh, the device off the table so I'm not close to the table when I'm actually cutting. I'm placing the material in, so it's facing downwards. I always want to cut in the direction of gravity, which is, which is downwards. I don't want to be trying to cut using my hand to go upwards or sideways. It's, it's very difficult, okay? Unless we have particular reason to do that, which I'll talk to you about in a second. Now, I'm gonna be cutting this, this line downwards first of all, and I'm gonna to go to about halfway, and once I get to the halfway point, I can spin it round to cut the other side. So I'm putting it quite low down in the vise and making sure it's quite secure, okay? Now, the most important thing when we start um, cutting or before we start cutting is the preparation, okay? We should first check that our blade is completely straight. Now, we can check this by making sure that these two pins are in line with each other, they're parallel. So I can hold the pin at the bottom, turn the handle to the left to loosen the blade, I can then spin the blade round so these two are in position, and then holding the pin again, I can tighten this up to stretch the blade, and it holds it in under tension like that. I should also check that the teeth on the blade, these tiny little teeth, are facing the downward position, this will make it easier for me to cut. Now the second point I can make when I'm addressing the work, when I'm putting the saw on the work, is the angle at which I'm cutting. Now, most of the time, I want to make sure the blade is held at 90 degrees to the edge of the work. So this angle here is making a right angle, or 90 degrees. I don't want to be holding like this, because otherwise the front surface will be larger than the rear. I don't want to be holding it at an angle like this, because otherwise the front surface will be smaller than the back. I want both surfaces to be cut at the same length. Now, when I start cutting, I put my thumbnail down on the surface. I'm not going to cut my thumb but I just bring the saw, holding it at 90 degrees, lightly backwards, next to where my thumb is cutting. Now I can do this about three or four times, and it will just make a tiny little groove in the acrylic like this, and then if we see my saw, it will just sit into that groove quite nicely, yeah, and it will stop it sliding around. Now when I'm cutting with a coping saw, I want to use the full length of the blade, and remember to myself that it only cuts when it's going towards me, so I don't need to, to do this, I can see a lot of people using the saw backwards and forwards, only using a small amount of the blade and basically wasting energy because this forward stroke is doing nothing. It's only this backward stroke that cuts. So I'm going to cut very carefully towards me, checking my line, and you can see I'm very slowly angling the blade as I'm cutting to follow the line that I've drawn on a piece of plastic. Now you might find it's quite difficult to control the saw the first time you've done it, and it's because this angle changes quite a lot in the wrist. Now, what you can do to prevent this is to hold the wrist with your other hand, and that will ensure that your hand stays firmer together. Now, when we want to remove the blade, some people just pull this, what happens is the blade will snap, because it's trying to get out of the curve. Now, we want to keep the blade moving, and just follow the path back out, a bit like a maze, until the saw comes out. Now, you can see I've cut halfway through, and I'm now going to start cutting from the other side, just to, to meet that line there. So I'm Use my apron to rub off any loose uh, plastic particles and put this back in the vise low down. Once again, I'm going to make a few marks in the acrylic next to my thumb and then again cut in with long strokes. Come closer to my line. Now you can see there, I'm quite close to the line, but I've left a small amount. Now this can then be cross filed or I could use something like the band facer to get closer to that line. Now the second demonstration I'm gonna do is if we've got to cut a straight line like this. Now some people, if they're very skilled, they can just cut a straight line and that'll be absolutely perfect. If you struggle with this, um, this control method, if you like, I can show you a technique to make this a little bit easier. Now this only works with our metal vise, but what we're gonna do is bring our acrylic and lay it so that the line on the, um, 
the work that I'm trying to cut is just lined up with this top surface here of the metal vise, okay? So I'm just protecting that like this, okay? Now, when I've got my saw, what I'm gonna do is this, this is what I'm talking about, the only time where I might cut in a different angle is when I'm using the vise as a guide to take the saw across. Now you'll find if I started cutting here, this frame is gonna get in the way of the vise. So what I'm gonna do is hold in my pin again, loosen the frame off, and then pivot both of these handles round, these two pins round like this, so that they are in the same line, but it allows me to cut with my frame well out of the way of the vise now. So I'm gonna tighten this pin up by holding it and turning it again to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And now, using the edge of the vise, I'm gonna cut using the same sort of technique, long strokes, cutting towards me, and I know that even if I don't go particularly straight, I'm not gonna go over my line, I'm also not gonna snap the work. Now when I get close to the edge, what I'm gonna do is just support the plastic here, and this will prevent it from jumping up and away from me. Now if I take that out of the vise, that piece of plastic, you can see again, I've just left about half a millimeter of space, and I've got a fairly straight line there.